Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today is Wednesday, the follow-up video of the plate cutting, making that daisy plate. Um, so I'm starting out here in the main shop today because as I said in my videos the last couple weeks with closing up the shop, I turned off the heat. I didn't turn off the heat per se. I turned it down to about 40 degrees in here um, to mostly because I still have water in here and everything and I got to keep things from freezing. So 40 degrees is a lot cheaper to heat than 68, 70. So 40 degrees, you know, I can live with. Just gotta wear a coat. And if I know I'm gonna be in here for a few days, I'll just turn the heat up. But the weld shop is ice cold. It is cold. Um, it is 20 below zero out this morning, Fahrenheit. And in the Celsius, that's uh, really freaking cold. So, um, I'm not going to go back there until I have to go back there for this follow-up video to show you, show you the stuff that needs to be shown on that. Um, but let's get started on the questions. We had a lot of really good questions on that video. Um, and uh, really great questions, actually. Um, but for, let me start here. So somebody did reach out about that plate and uh, bought it off me. It is boxed up and shipping out right now. So unfortunately, I don't even have one. I got to cut out another one for myself. I've got some inch and a half plate um, that I'll cut another one for myself. Um, and if everybody else is interested, I do have more inch and a half plate. I can cut, uh, burn out a couple more if somebody's interested. Um, that two inch plate, he paid me three twenty five for it. The cost of the material. This was one of the questions I had. How much did that piece of material cost you? It was $225. That's what I paid for that chunk of material. That's a lot of money. Steel is not cheap right now. Steel is actually ridiculous. So um, if you're wondering how much that cost, yeah, 225 bucks just for that piece of steel. So I made $100 on that to cut that out and you know clean it up and make it look nice. So, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. Somebody needed it. If you're interested in one, let me know, reach out and I'll, I'll get current pricing on all that, uh, uh, inch and a half material I have, and I can burn out more if anybody's interested. So let's get into the questions. So a really common question is, is what drives that? So for that, we'll go back out there. I'm going to skip over that. That's the first question that came up here. Um, so we'll skip over that. I'll go out there and we'll go over that in detail. Um, how does propane compare to acetylene? That's a good question. Propane cuts, burns a little bit cooler, um, but it is a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get. So in my region, for the longest time, we had one gas supplier. We had Praxair, which is Lindy, which is absolute scum, garbage, worst in the world. Um, the, the local place we could get it from, they, I can't tell you how many bottles I got that were empty or you name it, and they would just jerk you around and screw you over. Um, they, uh, you know, they'd bring me an empty bottle, or I'd get an empty bottle from them, and I'd take it back the next day, and they're like, oh, you used it up already. They're like, no, you gave me an empty bottle, you idiots. You know, it just, so I switched to propane to eliminate at least one more thing I was buying from them. Uh, still getting my oxygen, which was still a problem. Um, my argon, all that stuff, still a problem. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, we got oxygen services up here, and that changed things for us as far as getting gas. Um, a lot better company to work with, a lot more, <laughs> a lot better, a lot better. Prices are even about half. So um, I've been really fortunate there, but I stayed with the propane because it's cheap. It's readily available. Um, with the torch, I can go ahead and just get a, if I run out, I can run to town and get a 20 pound cylinder for, you know, propane grill. It's basically what I'm using is a 20 pound cylinder. Um, and I have a bulk tank here. I fill my own tanks. So that works out really well. It's just a little bit cooler, you know, a little more preheat time, whatever, but it, it cuts really good. So this one was, I only use a starting hole when I, when I, for when I can't lead in from an edge. And what was the cutting PSI on the oxygen? So coming in from the edge, you run the risk, as you're cutting out a part like that, you run the risk of it spreading and moving. And I've, I've tried that in the past, and I screwed up a part royally because it spread. It moved. Um, maybe if, you know, I'd start the cut and then come in on the backside and tack a bar on to keep it from moving, maybe, you know, weld it shut behind it. Um, but 
the starting hole is just an easy way to do it. It's safe, it keeps the material all intact because as you're cutting, you know, that heat is coming over here and it's cool over here. So it's, you know, it's moving, it's making changes. As far as the cutting PSI, I had it up around 70. Um, and I think I could have gone to a smaller tip, which I know was another question is, somebody asked what tip I used. I used a number two. I should have went down to a one. And with that high PSI, I bet you I would have got a much finer cut. Um, something I'm willing to try later on. So it looks like on the preheat that a liquid was pulled on the plate. <clears throat> Where did that come from? And as you said, you used a smaller size tip. Was it a number two? Yeah, so that, that guy was the one. So that liquid you're seeing, it was condensation. Um, and that'll happen with acetylene, but especially with propane. Propane is dissolved in water. So inside your tank, your propane tank, there is water. So every gallon of propane is dissolved in water. Um, and that's something I learned from the propane guys that I've worked with over the years. And I've learned a lot from the propane guys, which is transferring over to my new career pretty well. <laughs> All right, another one about how this thing works. Um, another one said about propane. Did he hear correctly? Yes, I do use propane. Propane for the torch fuel. A lot of people c interested in that. Um, I, I don't understand the, you know, a lot of... A lot of scrappers, big time scrappers, use propane. They don't use acetylene. Um, a lot of people use propane. And, and I think honestly, if you can get away from acetylene, yeah, it burns a little bit hotter, but propane is so much cleaner, um, so much quick, you know, it, it's so good. It's available. It's, you know, there's a lot of benefits to propane. Not as hot, but a lot of benefits. There's a lot of questions about this thing. All right, so. <laughs> There was a, okay, let me get to this one. There was a question about how the pattern is made. Um, there's an older video where I made a pattern and made a cutout, and that is this video here. And here is the part that I cut out. That is four inch thick. So I made the full pattern for this, burned it out on that copy torch, and uh, it came out really nice. So check out that video if you're interested in that. Um, the pattern I used for this one, I just sent some specs over to my local laser shop and they cut out the pattern for me, so no big deal. But uh, I've made my own patterns. You know, this is one of them. I've made actually quite a few, but this was the coolest one. I mean, four inch thick, who can beat that? So now let's head back there to the duplicator and I'll show you how it really works. All right, so in order for this to work, you need a metal pattern. So somebody did suggest getting a 3D printer to make my own patterns. It won't work, absolutely not. So you need a metal pattern because this little stylus is magnetic. And that's what does the job. It just grabs and it's knurled so it has a little bit of traction. Um, there are multiple different styluses for this. There's some bigger ones. Um, but this is the small one that really kind of follows very closely to the contour of the, the torch cut. So here is another pattern that I have that I burn out. And this one works really well. Um, being a little bit thicker, it, uh, you know, that's half inch. You can really get some good bite on that one with the, the magnet. There is the pattern for that four inch burnout. I have some round ones back here. So I have a bunch of different patterns, but I'll grab the camera, bring you in and really show you this thing up close. So as you can see, it's a knurled stylus and that just rotates. Let me turn it on here. And the magnet holds against the plate, just holds the stylus there and it works really well. You can run this thing pretty quick. And it's just a free floating arm. You know, it's got all kinds of support out here. It's a very simplistic piece of equipment, but it just follows around beautifully. Now somebody else asked about using a plasma torch and yes, absolutely. All I need to do is get a machine torch, plasma torch, which I've been thinking about doing for the thinner stuff. Um, but nowadays there isn't really a call for it, so I don't know if I'll ever get to that point. 
but I can put that in here, but I've done half inch with this and it does a beautiful job on half. Oh, I got stuck because I hit there. <laughs> I'll just reverse it, but see, it just holds, just holds. That's all it does. The magnet uh, doesn't allow it to walk away. So very simple design, simple piece of equipment. Somebody else had asked about this pan I built, and there's videos on this whole setup. I've done modified this thing from the day I got it. Um, it was used, and I've just made changes. But this pan down here, I had water in it the first time I made it, and that just caused a problem. Uh, it just made a lot of steam, um, just made a problem. And what I found was you get a little layer of slag in there, and it doesn't stick to the pan itself. So I just tap it with a hammer and pop the whole thing out and dump it. So it's a big drawer. It's a little heavy right now, but this will slide out and you can just clean it out. Here's a, here's a piece of uh, three inch that I cut about uh, six months ago, eight months ago. I mean, isn't that beautiful? A little bit of slag there. That'll come right off, but what a nice cut. Well, I hope that answered all the questions back there with the duplicator, because it is too freaking cold back there um, to be back there much longer. Um, it just, it's 20 below zero this morning. Not happy, not fun. Um, <laughs> I was gonna plow snow, when I got home the other day and nothing wanted to start and got to plug everything in, warm it up, but got it done. Um, I think we're, we're going to be out of this cold snap here this week. Um, well, we'll be zero degrees instead of the below zero stuff. So that'll be nice. But I hope that I answered all the questions. I think, I think we covered it all. Go and check out some of the older videos on this thing. Um, there's, there's some pretty interesting stuff. And uh, I hope that answers all the questions. I mean, propane, if, if you got a torch at home, I, I suggest switching over to propane just so you don't have to go buy acetylene. You know, it just, it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run, a lot of time, a lot of hassle. Um, yes, it's a little bit cooler burning, a little bit slower, but I haven't had any issues with it. I've actually, I've been very happy to have propane um, and I've actually talked to a few of my friends into switching over and they've just absolutely loved it because, you know, you're in the middle of a cut and you run out of a, run out of propane, you just go over to your barbecue and grab your cylinder, you know, whereas you run out of acetylene in the middle of a cut, now you got to drive to town or, you know, next town over or two towns over, you know, in our case, 50 miles. So it just works out really well for, for me, really, for the propane and it makes a beautiful cut you know, not bad. And like I said, that duplicator has been an amazing machine here in the shop. Not a big footprint, doesn't do a, you know, can't do a big, big piece. I think the biggest I've done would be running it corner to corner and it was like 33 inches long, inch and a quarter plate. Um, that one came out really cool too. But, uh, you know, there, there are other machines out there, bigger machines. Uh, somebody mentioned the optical eye one, the later version of this that you can just put a drawing, a piece of paper down. I wish I had one, I wish I could find one. Uh, but again, I have no need for one. Things are, like I said, closed up the shop and moving on to a new career. So for me, for hobby stuff and the occasional job that comes in, that thing is perfect. It's paid for, it's sitting there, doesn't cost me anything, so works out good. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope I answered all the questions. Um, we've got a couple, got a job coming up here on the Lion, I think is the next video. And then the uh, magnetic particle testing on the uh, Squatch Rock Crusher job. And then I don't know what we have. Um, I'm trying to get through training with my new job through this cold stretch. Um, and then hopefully middle end of January, I can get back out here and start working on stuff because I think it's looking at the forecast that first couple of weeks of January, maybe even most of January is really miserable here. So trying to keep the heat down, keep the cost down, save some money. It's kind of the, the big goal right now. So we'll get through, through that. I'll see what I can do for videos. So until then, check out my old stuff. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Two
dumb to quit, too proud to cry Still grinding steel under a fading sky The last machine shop in a frozen hell Just me and a dream I can't seem to sell Too dumb